Today's story is called Locomotive by Brian Floca. I know you've been learning about the Transcontinental Railway, but this story is about the crews that made them run and how they did it. It's about a family heading west hoping to start a new life. It is the summer of 1869 and trains, crews, and family are traveling together riding America's first transcontinental railroad, still new, just built. Here is a road made for crossing the country, a new road of rails made for people to ride. Here your trip begins at the depot on the platform. The people here, the passengers, have packed and shipped and sold their things, all their things, everything. They have their tickets for a trip of a week through days and nights across the wide country down to the sea. Look for the train that will take you, the first train of the trip. Listen for the engine for the mighty locomotive. She is waiting in the rail yard, ready for her work. Hear the clang of the bell, hear the huff of the engine, the crew is bringing her out. See the puff from her stack, a puff of smoke, a smudge in the sky. Here she comes, see a puff, a smudge, a cloud. A storm. Now comes the locomotive, the iron horse, the great machine, 50 feet and 40 tons, wheels spinning, rods swinging, motion within motion, running down the track. She's bright in her paint and her polish, the pride of her company and crew. She pulls her tender and train behind her. She rolls up close to where you wait, all heat and smoke and noise. Hear the clear, hard call of her bell, clang, clang, clang. Hear the hiss and the spit of the steam. Hear the engine breathe like a beast. She carries the crew that makes her run, the brakeman, the fireman, the engineer, and in charge of them all, the conductor, the captain of the train. And he cries, All aboard! Step up, step up quick, up in the cab, the crew's making ready, the train's about to leave. Up in the cab, small as a closet, hot as a kitchen, it smells of smoke, hot metal and oil. The fireman keeps the engine fed. He scoops and lifts and throws the coal from the tender to the firebox. It's hard work, hot work, smoke and cinders, ash and sweat, hard work, hot work. But that's a fireman's life. He tends the fire that boils the water, that turns the water into steam. Then the engineer, the hogger, pushes forward the Johnson bar. He blows the whistle as a warning. He toots to say, the train's about to go. He pulls the throttle lever and he opens the throttle. Not too much at first or the wheels would spin on the tracks. Easy, easy, he releases the steam. It pushes, pushes through the pipes. It goes to work. It pushes, pushes, pushes the pistons and push and pull the rods. The rods, they swing and rise and fall and make the dry wheels turn. The engine huffs and hisses, bangs and clanks. Metal rolls on metal, and the locomotive moves. It gives the cars a jerk and a tug. It pulls them out of the station. Now more steam, more steam, faster, faster turn the wheels. Faster, faster, breeze the engine. Huff, 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 huff. The train is on its way. Through the cars comes the conductor. Tickets, please, he cries as he walks down the aisle. Have them ready or have a short trip. Out the windows, the city runs by. Homes and schools, then farms and fields. They rush up close and then fall away. The engineer feels the wind on his face, the fire by his feet. High up in the cab, he feels the engine shudder and sway. He feels it shake as it picks up speed. The sound of the engine surround him, the rhythm of the pistons, the pounding like hammers, the drivers drumming the rails, the smoke and the steam rushing up the stack. Chug, 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 chug. The engineer keeps his hands on the throttle, keeps his eyes on the line. He is the master of his machine. He knows her moods and tempers, where to set her bars and levers, when to slow down and then speed up, when to run her wide open, full steam ahead. Faster, faster, turn the wheels. Faster, faster, breathes the engine. The country runs by, the cottonwoods and the river. Westward, westward runs the train, through the prairies to the Great Plains, on to the frontier. The hours and miles roll by. 
the country opens, opens wide, empty as an ocean. Smell the switchgrass and the blue stem, hot beneath the sun. Here the bison used to roam, by the hundreds, by the millions. Here the Cheyenne lived, and the Pawnee, and the Arapaho. Here covered wagons used to crawl foot by foot, mile by mile, heading into the west. The railroad and the men who built it, they have changed it all. Now there are long steel rails running like new rivers connecting coast to coast. Now the telegraph crosses the country. People and mail are traveling by rail. Words are traveling by wire. The world is speeding up. The rattling rocking cars, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. There are neighbors to meet, games to play, songs to sing. And if you're bored, if you're hungry, there is the butch. A boy who walks the aisle and sells books, maps, magazines, yesterday's newspaper, fruits and candies, soap and towels, coffee, tea, sugar, hash browns, beans, bacon, and all the cigars you can smoke. Disaster on the Memphis line. Read all about it. There's a stove in the corner for winter trips to keep the passengers warm and a convenience in the other. You can see what a convenience is. It's tricky sometimes to use it when the train is rolling and running and lurching, leaning left and right. But do the best you can. Don't wait for the train to stop. It's rude to use the toilet when the train is sitting at the station. There is no plumbing here. There's only a hole in the floor. As the engine pulls the train, it burns through coal, it boils through water, and soon it must stop for more. The engineer slows the engine and he blows his whistle to signal the crew. Down brakes! The brakermen hear the call and they turn their wheels, which tighten the brakes. They tighten them car by car. The train stops at new cities and stops at new towns, Grand Island, Kearney, and North Platte, and on cities and towns built up for the railroad, built to keep the engines running. At the water tower, the fireman pulls a spout and the fireman lets the water out. Splash! He fills the tank in the tender, so there will be water to pump to the broiler when the engine needs it. And when the train is stopped, when it's time for dinner, find the railroad restaurant. Find the hash house, quick. It's a dollar for dinner and 20 minutes to eat it. Don't waste any time. Today's menu is buffalo steak, antelope chops, and chicken stew. If the chicken stew tastes like prairie dog, don't ask why. Hmm. Mm. When the crew and their engine have done a full day's work, fresh men and machines will take their place. Into the roundhouse the old engine goes, and out from the roundhouse a new engine rolls. The new crew gets to work. The engineer pulls back on the Johnson bar to put the engine in reverse. He blows the whistle as a warning, three toots to say he's backing up. Now the switchman in the rail yard will attach the engine to the train. He will step between the tender and cars as the two are pushed together. And at just the right moment, no sooner, no later, he'll put the links and pin in place that will hold the train together. Switchmen must be careful, and switchmen must be quick, for cars get bumped, they roll and jump, sometimes when they shouldn't. And here's what they say about switchmen. You can tell that one is new to the job if he still has all his fingers. Now the tender rolls close. In goes the link, clink. Down drops the pin, clank. The switchman steps away. The train is ready to roll again. Full steam ahead again, westward, westward. Through the night, the engine runs. Those up late hear her whistle, her whistle and lonesome cry. It echoes on far hills and homes. It sounds in distant dreams. In the cars, it's time to sleep, or at least it's time to try. In better cars, if you're rich, there are better beds. Porters pull them from the ceilings. They make them from the seats. In your car, for a bed, you can use your bench. Get as comfortable as you can. Ask your neighbors nicely, would you move your elbow? Will you move your foot? Could you please stop snoring? In the dark, the country is changing. The plains rise up like a ramp to the foot of the rocky. By morning, the country is steep. Hard work for one locomotive. At the Cheyenne station, the train gets two engines. Now the train is a double header. Up, 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 the two engines climb up among the mountains. But see how well the train's path was chosen? The mountains stay to the left, 
The mountains stay to the right. The train never meets them head on. It winds between. It weaves among instead of climbing over. Still, up, 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 the two engines chug. Working together, they make the grade. They make it to Sherman Station. It may not look or feel so high, like the top of a hill or a mountain peak, but this is the highest point on the line. West of here, the country dips and drops again. West of here, one engine will do. Now the country is rugged. Now the train travels over trestles. Slowly, slowly, the engineer drives. The train is so heavy, and the bridge is so narrow, and rickety, rickety, rickety. This wreck here is not our engine. They watch the signals and the switches, and they know to slow down for the curve. They watch the they gauge watch. that shows the pressure. If there's too much pressure, they blow off some steam. They watch the valves on the back head. Those show how much water is left in the boiler. If too much water boiled away, if the level dropped too low, the firebox would melt. It would buckle. It would blow. The locomotive would explode. So when the valves show the water dropping, the engineer pulls a handle. He pumps in water from the tender. He keeps his engine safe. Wouldn't you? Westward, westward rolls the train. Down into canyons, again into night, it rolls among sage and below strange stones, stranger and stranger the farther you go, until every mile brings some new wonder. See them in the moon's pale light, castles, pulpits, witches, slides. And see a sign that hangs from a branch, 1,000 mile tree it reads, 1,000 miles. That's how far your train has traveled since the trip began. Still westward, westward rolls the train, rolling below the stars. Above the Great Salt Lake, north of Salt Lake City, the city of saints that the Mormons have made, you reach Promontory Summit. This is the high and lonesome place where this new road of rails was finished. This is where its two halves met, one from the east and one from the west. Here. They were joined with a golden spike, a spike made of gold. But don't look for it now. The gold was hammered in and then the gold was taken out, taken someplace safe and replaced right away with a spike made of iron. It took two companies to build this new road and it takes two companies to run it. Now you'll change from one to the next. The Union Pacific has gotten you this far. The Central Pacific will finish the job. Forward, forward. Here in the West, there's more wood than coal. So wood is what the new engine burns. The fireman lifts it from the tender and he throws it into the firebox. He keeps the water boiling. Then the engineer sends the train on its way out of the station. Through the Great Basin, a bleak and silent land, silent except for the huff and the bang and the hiss of the engine and the click and the clack of the cars. On the train rolls, down through the desert, the home of the Paiute and the Shoshone. It's a land of dust and bitter rivers, rivers that never reach the sea. They sink away, they vanish. Think of those who came before, who crossed in covered wagons, traveling foot by foot under the beating sun, no water worth drinking for mile after mile. And then at last relief, you reach the Truckee Valley. The shadows of trees, the touch of cool air, the smell of woods and fresh rivers. Now there's one last set of mountains to cross, the mighty Sierra Nevada. They rise like a wall on the edge of the basin. There is no way to wind round them. These the trains must climb. It takes a second engine again to pull the train up, up, up into the mountains. Up, up the engines climb. If the rails are slick, if the wheels won't catch, the engineers can pull a handle and drop some sand down a tube onto the tracks. The wheels hit the grit and the traction does the trick. Up, up through the spruce and the pines, past mills and mines, through shadowy sheds, long and dark. In winter, they keep snow from blocking the tracks, but all year round, they block the view. Up, up, over stone and under through the mountain summit where granite was drilled and blasted here, black powder and nitroglycerin. Now in the dark, the engines echo.
Then out the other side. Now the climbing is done. The train changes engines at Summit Station. Again, one engine will do. It's all downgrade from here. Around the curve they call Cape Horn. Down the train rolls, high above the tumbling river, but lower, lower every minute. It rattles and speeds, it dips and drops. The brakemen stand at the ready. The engineer sends some steam in reverse just to keep the train from going too fast. Down, down past orchards and towns, down towards cities, down to stop at the depot, to stop and be still at the end of the line. Now your days on the train are done. You're tired and dusty. The smell of smoke is stuck in your clothes. But now you are here, here where you needed to go, here where you need to be, here with the people you've waited and waited and needed to see. Now the country's far corners have been pulled together thanks to the men who tend the engines, who mine the trains, and their passengers, thanks to the locomotive. Thanks to the locomotive, you've crossed the wide plains and deserts. And now you're in Sacramento, California. You found new cities, new towns beyond the mountains. On the Pacific, by that new sea, you have found a new place to call home. San Francisco, California. And do you notice that the train would stop in Sacramento and then you had to take a steamboat to get to San Francisco? The end.